Read this, the book review show, featuring book reviews, author interviews, and more. Welcome to Read This, the book review show. I'm one of your hosts, Patrick Morgan. And I'm your other host, Connor Kelly Eiding. Our first book is for all you golf lovers out there, as well as anyone who's ever been interested in picking up the game, but who's been put off by how difficult or time-consuming it can be. Well, here you go. Golf Made Easy, a backward approach to learning golf. Or is it? The basics of golf are covered in Golf Made Easy, started with teaching putting first. Now this is where the subtitle for the book comes in. Teaching putting first goes against all the traditional methods of learning golf, as driving is usually the first thing that's covered. However, since half of the game of golf is putting, why not learn it first? And most people agree that putting is actually pretty fun, so why not try to learn how to put the ball in the hole on your very first lesson? And that kind of gives you an idea of the tone of this book, too. It's both fun and light-hearted. Um, it's a beginner's book, a how-to beginner's book that covers the A to Z of golf in a simple and logical manner. The author describes a typical golf course, different types of clubs and ball selection, as well as some of the terminology of the game, and he also goes into a general overview of the rules and the etiquette of the sport, all the while doing so in a fun and easy to follow manner. Well, and I understand this was author Jeffrey W. Kern's motivation for writing the book. After an extended time working in Iraq, he came home and wanted to brush up on his game. He couldn't afford expensive private lessons, so he turned to books. But he soon found that most of them were overly complicated and filled with black and white pictures that looked to be about 100 years old. Uh, after a while, though, he became a certified golf instructor, and uh, uh, as well as a certified club fitter. And at a certain point, he sat back and looked at all the information he had amassed and thought, wow. That was really easy. How come everyone doesn't know this stuff? So he decided to write the book. The book he had been looking for, but couldn't mm -hmm. find. Another wonderful aspect of this book is the great color photographs of real beginners learning to play the sport, so that you can see how you will look when learning to putt and swing the clubs. Um, it's also great because the author is working on the next installment, which is designed for the new beginners to take the next step to becoming a scratch golfer. The new book will feature, you know, content looking to eliminate the variables that might hinder the game, such as club fitting, uh, physical fitness, your mental attitude towards the game, and of course, most importantly, practice. The new book will be called Breaking Par. Uh, but first, I'm going to get my game started with Golf Made Easy, a wonderful how-to book you really will enjoy as it teaches you the basics. And that's why we say, read this. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more reviews after this. Welcome to Author Marketing Ideas. AMI was founded to empower authors to market their work to its fullest potential. We work with today's authors, the self-published, the digital, those ready to take the next step in promotion, ready to embrace innovation and reinvent the wheel. The tools are available. Enhanced author websites, digital and mobile ready, video book trailers, social media, press releases with embedded video, and we are available to teach and assist to create a customized marketing strategy because each author and every book is a unique creation. Market your work. Go local. Go global. Go viral. Ready? Then visit us at authormarketingideas.com and get a free digital footprint evaluation. Your digital footprint is what we call the size and shape of your online presence, and that's crucial to marketing success. We'll analyze and pinpoint your areas of strength and weakness and make recommendations. So check us out at authormarketingideas.com. A deadly biological weapon threatens Earth in The Scorpion's Daughter, a stunning new thriller by author Stephen Montagna. Here is another author who uses real-life events as the springboard for fiction. In this exciting new novel, the Iraqi military devises a designer biological weapon. 
When American intelligence accidentally learns about it via some secret military papers, they discover that this pathogen, if released, will mutate and destroy all life on the Earth. The U.S. quickly assembles a special team led by Captain Robert Walker. The captain leads his soldiers into the heart of the Iraqi desert to try and track down a young woman who is rumored to know of the location of this weapon. But the clock is ticking. Time is running out for Walker as his team struggles and races against time to find the biological agent before the scorpion's daughter can destroy the world. The author says that he wrote this book as a sort of warning and to possibly answer the what if question of what if we didn't go after Saddam Hussein when we had. Montagna says that if we hadn't, Saddam would have continued his quest to become a world threat, if not through nuclear means, then through chemical means. And this is surely a timely topic as we see the situation in Syria unfolding and another dictator willing to use chemical weapons against his own people. The author has done a lot of study on the subject, as well as on terrorism and counterterrorism, and, uh, you know, it shows in his work. I've been under the impression and I've learned that he's been interviewed by senators, FBI and CIA members, as well as on national radio broadcasts. And, you know, his expertise really shows through because what he gives you in this book is not only a riveting thriller, but also an insider's look at how a crisis like this is handled. As Montagna says, I enjoy mixing true and current events into my fictional work and blending the two so well that it's hard to determine what is real and what is fictional. And that's what makes this such a great read. It, it has this veracity woven into the drama. It's a truly rare find. As reviewer Kristen D. put it, I'm typically not one for books about war and weapons of mass destruction, but a friend suggested I read this. From the very first page, my attention was grabbed. It was extremely enthralling and exceedingly difficult to put down. The energy and passion of the author is clearly transferred into the pages of this phenomenal story. I would recommend it to anyone looking for an exciting read. We agree completely. The Scorpion's Daughter. Read this. And don't go away. We'll be right back with more reviews after this. Do you like to go to the movies and watch the coming attractions? Do you decide what looks good and what you want to see? Then check out the world of video trailers, where we do the same thing for books. Our trailers feature a script written to showcase your narrative, recorded by professional voiceover artists, and then produced by our video directors, using music and state-of-the-art visuals and effects. Let us bring your book to life, literally and show it to an audience that is millions strong and growing. In fact, every day, over 100 million Americans watch online video, and over 60% of book buyers shop and buy online. Video book trailers are becoming the way to reach this audience. Get in on this growing trend and treat your book like the Hollywood blockbuster it is. For more information, Visit us at authormarketingideas.com or email jessica at jessica at authormarketingideas.com and get your trailer started. Up next is a love story from author Uta Christensen that seamlessly mixes romance, uh, culture, history, and politics. Tough as Fine Silk is an alluring tale of love and betrayal that takes readers on a fast-paced journey through China. As Californian Michael Sorensen, who's working as an electronics engineer in Beijing, has a frightening encounter on China's Great Wall. A beautiful young Chinese woman, Li Jian, trips on a stairway up above him and literally falls into his arms. If he hadn't caught her, she could have been killed. Jian is the starring attraction at Beijing's Blue Moon nightclub but she soon leaves the nightclub for a day job in order to spend more time with Michael. However, when Michael is the victim of a hit-and-run car accident, Jian is terrified, frightened that her former bosses may be responsible for the accident, and uh, fearing that their lives are still in danger. The couple flees Beijing, setting out on a long train journey throughout historical China. While on it, they fall in love. But will the couple be able to start their life together 
and escape the danger, or will there be more dangerous twists and turns up ahead? I don't want to give away the ending, but <laughs> this one will keep you turning pages and delivers a finale that you will not be expecting. I know author Uta Christensen has said that all of her books, and this is her fourth novel, are based on true stories, even if it's just the seed of an idea that then sprouts and grows. She's also lived and traveled in many different parts of the world, and this love for traveling is showcased in the different backgrounds and histories that she uses for her narratives. Absolutely, and when you read Tough as Fine Silk, it, it really feels like you're there, in China. I think this is part of what makes the book feel so vibrant and alive. It, the, the country, the culture, the locales are all so perfectly rendered. And I see reviewers and readers both commenting on this. The book is getting five-star reviews, by the way. I can understand why. I love the action and thriller aspects of the book, which make it more than just a love story. Mm -hmm. It's a love story plus, which will appeal to audiences of all types. And that's why we say, Tough as fine silk. Read this. Don't go away. We've got more reviews coming your way right after this. <music> Author Francis Webb's Innocence and Gold Dust is set in the fourth century in the Roman Empire. Eutropius is an orphan who was castrated as a baby in order to increase his worth as a slave. And as a slave, he struggles with his lack of social and sexual power, which then turns into a lust for wealth and political power. Eutropius uses a number of questionable methods to gain money and prestige. He is determined to overcome his outcast status, and so employs a number of nefarious plots, including switching brides with the emperor and uh, kidnapping a bishop in order to achieve his goals. He does, and he finally attains a political position of the power behind the emperor. However, public outrage over a eunuch having such high standing quickly threatens to knock him back down. I have to say that the sex, the violence, the the crafty behind the scenes maneuverings and machinations really brings to mind Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Absolutely. But the beauty here in this story is that it's set in a real time and uh, in a real place. So regardless of all the outrageousness that transpires, it's always very much rooted in that real time in history. And this is when Christianity was on the rise and when the old gods were, the days of the old gods were waning in Constantinople which was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. Oh, uh, by the way, Innocence and Gold Dust are the emperor's bears, and we follow them through the streets and marketplaces. They are our guides, so to speak. The book has been getting nothing but rave reviews. Oh, deservedly so. It's a perfect combination of well-told tale peopled with uh, engaging characters, with a wonderful narrative filled with intrigue and action, as well as the psychological insight into the nature of power and the reasons for its allure. And it's a real page turner. Innocence and Gold Dust. <laughs> Read this. Thank you very much for watching today's episode. Join us next time for another episode of Read This, the book review show. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out for our next show. And for information on how to have your book reviewed, email Ellen at authormarketingideas.com.